Okay, so synthetics. Okay, so if you notice that what's happening in our world right now, let's just bring it here because this knowledge that I'm carrying is the most practical for the timeline that we're living in. I can go into the Upanishads and I can go into the Bhagavad Gita and many of those works because I've went through every single spiritual work here on the planet. I have another system that I just have books read to me and I have this thing that I basically I put the book in and it turns it into audio and then I play it back at a certain speed and then I even can sleep and just take it in. So you can even link with me and I'll give you the knowledge of how to do that, right? But that just allow if you want to satisfy your curiosity of what's going on and you also have books that you know may contain. So what you have going on then is you have this synthetics, okay? And this is what our next challenge is and it has a lot to do with plastic. And what's going on then is that you notice how our world is switched over to these computers, right? And you see how there's a lot of computer space now? Like as far as, you know, you might be able to put 500 gigs on a computer, right? And then now there's websites and things and they hold a lot of space too. And they're letting you upload unlimited amounts of data. Where's all this data going? Where is it being kept? Okay. And they love to call it the cloud now, right? But where they're actually keeping it is they're keeping it underground. Underground, you'll find these rooms, like huge rooms of nothing but servers of silicon, okay? So you understand this whole as above, so below thing because the same way that um, the modern woman has started to put plastic in her body, they are starting to put plastic in earth, right? So this is the beginning of the synthetic. It's a war against basically clones. Clones of ourselves in many tenses. Like you don't wanna really create too many external enemies here because all is self. This is the highest maximum. You'll find you will be able to maintain the greatest level of power and energy and harmonics in that concept. Especially when you're flying through some of these fields where you see these things that are totally not on phi base geometry. Now, let me explain phi base geometry again. What makes a person attractive is how close they are to phi. Meaning that when you measure out the distance between their nose, distance and eyes and all that kind of stuff, a perfect human, which is known as the apex human, is completely perfect in phi. And the further that you get away from that, that's when a person can actually look and say, oh, that person's ugly. So just so you understand this whole thing with phi. Now, phi is an ancient Chinese system. It has to do with a lot. Well, it was first really known about then, we'll say that, right? And this word is called e the same word that we use for eating, okay? It's a phi based system that's based on combustion. It's wood gets versus fire versus water versus, right? And what this does is it creates a will of perpetual energy of combustion. Now, unfortunately, we're taking these roles as wood or water or whatever pole we can jump on, and then we come into conflict with the next adjacent pole that's not like us, and then the universe just says, great, because this is driving me because it's more like the same pattern of our body. Our head is here. Generally, our consciousness sits in the seat of our head like that little alien on Men in Black. But the body has to do all the work, right? And then what do you find in the lowest area? The feet. And they're two feet, obviously, or two legs. And one is stepping in front of the other as if they're in a constant competition with one another, and we call that walking. And this is why for a while, Man was looked at as almost like a chariot for the gods, even what they, they call the book Chariot of the Gods. And it was because our godlike consciousness, Oversoul, sits in the seat of our brain, or known as the throne or the holiest of holies, and then just sits there and commands what it needs to do in the three dimensional environment. Because these beings that we are don't mesh well with 3D unless they get a real body to do so. Now, what occurred though is generally we always sat in the seat of our of our heads right so if you saw us you just see us as orbs that's it now when we started making the agreements arms arms mars mars torso taurus cow body mammal okay legs every bit of snakes and dogs right so these appendages are the packs that we made as you see it's a pact or a ban or an agreement to actually function on 3d but we're making it's almost like it's not just as like oh, okay i'm gonna take a leg here i'm gonna take an arm here i'm gonna take a bird brain i'm gonna take this all of that stuff is like promises and what it's the promise is is that you will instruct these vehicles or bodies or essences on how to obtain what you've already obtained 
right? So in this though, that's where the whole teacher thing is because you're actually teaching your body how to maintain this godlike state. Now, that war was lost in most people because they have a metaphor. They say that the great angel Michael was battling with the devil and, uh, and, and there was a war in heaven. Okay, this is all metaphors. The, the whole Bible is a metaphor. Okay, so the war in heaven is the war in the head. The great angel Michael is the bird one, meaning all of your bird like aerial consciousness here. Obviously, the serpent is the gunat, it is the lower area reproductive system of the body. It's hell because it's a hearth, it's supposed to burn up all the impurities, so it does really have a function and use. However, if the gunats or the lower area of the body suggest something, they're supposed to be rebuked very fast. Like they'll always suggest, I want to eat and let's say flesh, or I want to go and sleep with her, or I want to, because that's just like a child. That's how they are. They always want to do something. But the higher state of consciousness is what is the the, the judge thing and says, no, no, no. You, what you're going to do is you're going to do what I tell you to do. And we're going to go and take a jog. And trust me, later on, you're going to like it. And then let's say a, a year later, your legs are strong and they don't you don't want to go mess your legs up. You see what I mean? So there's like this training process that goes on. But if you happen to keep losing the battles, meaning that if every time that they try to come up with the ideas and then you accept it, you eventually can be thrown off the throne. So this is also what the so-called controllers, the Illuminati, whatever, they know. Because they know that they are not in a higher vibratory frequency, but their goal is to push you in a frequency that's lower than them so that they can stand on top of you. You see what I mean? So it's still even joining them, which a lot of people are now fascinated with doing, doesn't put you on a more harmonic, greater level of experience. But what it does do is it puts you above the average individual in a sense of what they know about their body and what they know about how to remain in the throne of their consciousness, right? So what occurs then is that, so you have this spectrum because when you shine a clear light into a prism, it gives you seven colors, right? So these seven colors then are the seven layers or the bands in between worlds. And then you get to the next octave. And then there's seven more layers and then the next octave. Now, if you took something from band three here, and mashed it with something from band three down, what you would say is down here, just like with music, you would see that they have some really, really harmonic similarities, right? So this is also how the reality is generated. You have Costa Rica, and then you have Swats in Oakland. And these are two opposite frequencies of different spectrum, but holding the spectrum. That way, if you ever decide that you want to go into violet harmonics, then you have the opportunity to. But if you want to stay in the red zone, then you have an opportunity to. So it also changes based on your energy, right? So you're really definitely being judged on what you do and what you decide. That's actually why you're here, right? Versus in the other environment. So this thing gets a little deeper because obviously we're not the first ones to arrive here. What occurred was, is this knowledge that I'm telling you about, that the, basically the bodies and universe, that's how you can sum it up. It's a map of this immediate galaxy. You never left yourself without some type of way of figuring out where you were. When you decided to wake up, you're inside of the body that is a map of where you can go and how to function. So. That whole myth that we were, we started as cavemen or comparing the cavemen skeletons to uh, uh, to what kind of beings we were back then is the same as trying to compare an Aborigine Bushman skeleton to a guy from New York. You see what I mean? There's always a sliding scale of the different kind of entities that exist here, but never just, it's never going to just be one thing. So let's see what i'm trying to think of what would be more prevalent it's really just to answer your questions like as you see there's no question that i can't really answer about this immediate universe and even some of them that are adjacent to this one because the knowledge matches up with you know everything that's happening here if you're looking under the microscope sometimes you have to look at it that deep or using a macro or something that can show it to you on a bigger scale but if you have some questions it'll be a good time the judgment is, is something that takes place inside of your, it's your intuition. It's your, uh, your moral bearing. You know when you're doing something wrong. Nobody has to tell you that. 
right? It's just about whether you're able to convince yourself of it or not, or to do it or not. And remember, this is the two snakes. This is why the two snakes, they come up and they terminate right here. If the globe is your head, right, on that caudaceous staff, the two snakes are right here because they're whispering in the ear. Now, in the Arab tradition, they know way more about this than the English tradition. They say, Udu billahi min al shaitan regime, meaning protect us from the whispers of shaitan. Because the knowledge of that this entity that is like a serpent does not have a voice box. It, it's neither good nor bad or plays both roles. You see what I mean? It's basically what you hear as your thoughts. That's why it says, oh, it has a whisper that can't be heard. It can't, like nobody will hear it unless they can read your mind. And that's why it's inside of your mind. It's not like in an external world, some hybrid reptilian creature running around deceiving everyone. That would only be a, a being or a human who chose to resonate that frequency and then act out like that. But what's really happening is also you do have many of these parasites and basically alien life forms, alien to your body that are in the body. And like Candida, for instance, which is exactly. Candida suggests things. It says, hey, I need this. I need this candy bar. I need this, you know, whatever you crave. Exactly. And, and remember, these are not your thoughts. So it's actually the other life form that is hardwired to survive. So in a tense, when you say is it good or evil, these things are just trying to survive. If we let them survive off of us, then that's something that we did. But in reality, every single life form is hardwired in this DNA to survive. And survival comes through replication, which is also what's got us in a lot of trouble. Because we're replicating at such a rapid rate, but not educating our children that we're actually cutting off our om omniscience on this dimension. Meaning that if these children don't have a tether, which is basically their silver line, which comes from their head, and then there's another cord that comes out of somewhere where you see your tail, your cossacks, it goes into the earth. That one's generally cut, just like you don't have a tail now. But if you notice on some humans, there's a little area back there that looks like, and you've even seen in India, some kids are born with tails, but we used to have tails. The, in the physical body, now remember, the physical body is something that we created, it's a grand design, but all the vertebrae, which are included in also the tail, give us our tail, T-A-L-E, T-A-I-L. It gives us the rest of our memory of what we've been here for, and it keeps us on balance. You notice that most animals that have a tail use it to keep balance. So if you don't have a tail, you're kind of naturally off balance unless you can compensate, right? So what you have in the vertebrae then is you have uh, levels. That's why they show you in the chakra and the spine and all of it goes up the spine and there's 33 vertebrae and then you get to 33 degrees. And the reason why they speak of it this way is because you're talking about fire. The soul is like a flaming fire. Really, it's air because everything that you're seeing here is made out of air, nothing, right? What they say is nothing, but depending on if you slow it down, if you slow it down to a certain point, it condenses and it becomes water. If you take it to another vibratory frequency and you strike it, it becomes fire. So air or the Aryan was not really a color of a particular person, but a state that could be reached. That's why one of the highest states that you can achieve on the planet is a breath Aryan. Because after you've ascended from minerals and from minerals, then you go to water. Once you're at water, then you go to air. And then if your prana system is working properly, you can live on air. And, you know, that's just, you know, we, we went really far here, but this is, uh, okay, so this is this is just the process of, of this whole awakening, right? So the Aryan. Right. Well, what happened is, is that the Germans, uh, as you see the word German, meaning that the first man, Okay. They were fascinated with attempting to find where they came from, but they were so incessantly obs obsessed with it, it became a tool for another group of, uh, uh, of ourselves on the timeline that have more of a darker state of consciousness. They never found the light because the way they were looking for it is they were killing for it. They were willing to kill for it. To find the secret of life, they were willing to cut open themselves. Exactly. Because, and that's what frustrated them so much. Because once they realized when they created a clone that it couldn't think really beyond the basic animalistic type traits of what the body can really do, then they realized that they could not capture the soul in a beaker. 
So it would just pass right through the beaker. They even had things to see the soul leaving, but they could not capture it, right? So this, in all this uh, money and, and power and things that were spent on the paranormal division, which is Hitler's army, that was scouring the world looking for these secrets. That's why they went to Tibet first, right? And then they use Ubermensch, which is basically, uh, it's like a mind-controlled human. It won't feel pain because it's been altered from that state. And march them through the, the Oral Mountains, I believe it is, which is basically an untrackable region unless you have prana. Because prana can keep your body hot even when you are in below zero, right? What you see the Tibetan masters, they're sitting on the top of the mountain. Because prana in the energy in our body, well, prana is like soul force. It's like vital energy. It's like what we're pulling from this atmosphere that's giving us life. You see what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. So you're pulling, and the body can sustain itself off this stuff, but it can also even take itself into an even higher level with it. But you have to remain cool. You see what I mean? Because anger is blinding. So what's happened with many of the masters is that once attempting to deal with Kundalini, Kundalini is like when it stops becoming a game. Like at first it's like, okay, you can make mistakes and stuff. Kundalini can't really make mistakes. Kundalini then is basically in the base of your spine and the cossacks tucked down in the last bone is you now. It's... Where the root chakra is, yes, but the root chakra is corresponding to hell. So if you see the carol card, you'll see the devil there, and then you'll see him chain has two humans chained down next to him, right? And what this is a metaphor of is that in the cossacks of our spine, once being cast from the throne of our consciousness, like so all the stuff that we're supposed to do, when we stop doing that, we then chain we trade places with the last suggestion. So if the last suggestion came from our lower area, basically below the waist, right? Then the lower waist goes here, like the being that lives there, then goes here into our crown, starts controlling everything, living like it wants to. And then we go down, we, we go down slowly through our bodies. But this could happen over several lifetimes, right? So as you're going down through the bodies, you're actually going through wars because all these worlds are not perfect. You see what I mean? They're all founded on conflict. They're all founded on fire. You see what I mean? That's why the chakras are circles. They're wheels. Five is a circle. It's the wheel. And that's why they say, don't reinvent the wheel. Meaning once you understand how this really works, you'll see how the whole reality melds to it, right? But what happens is, is that once you're descending through your consciousness, right? Then where you'll end up though, because remember this being is used to not it's just dealing with light fields, light programming, all that kind of stuff. So when it has to get into here, this is scary. All of what exists in this frequency and part of the body terrifies it because it's basically division. So what it does is it retreats to the lowest point. It retreats to the cossacks of the spine, which is the last part of where the tail was. And then it balls up in there, like in this position. And then what packs on top of it is all the fears. So you're not, when you're raising Kundalini, you're not just trying to raise the energy. You're also trying to break off these subsequent fields or shells that have built up around the energy. Because that's why fear paralyzes. If you say something to someone, ah, they'll jump back. So the pineal gland, when it's scared, it closes, right? So the reality is developed off of fear. If you'll notice, humans are not the only being scared here. If you want up on a bird, it'll fly away because fear is inherent. It's in all of the fields, right? So the goal is, is to remove fear by basically shining the light, but we have to be that light, right? So and light is a part, it's a part of its knowledge. Like I'm giving you knowledge now. There is application to this, right? You're learning a lot of the application here. So continuing. So now this this uh the, the being the the kundalini then the kundalini then is uh it's like your lot, it's like your inheritance, it's all of your memories, everything that your biorhythm has gained over this time with the soul group that it belongs to, okay? It's all down there, right, balled up. And then when it starts to awake, it then awakes to fear because it's like, oh my goodness, what is going on? Because the first layer that is sh it's shrouded around was basically the last thing that it saw before it decided to ball up completely. 
So now you're opening back up and then you're seeing it as it really is, actuality, right? And then you're summoning the energy because Kundalini is no joke. It knocks degenerate beings on their ass, basically. There's no force that can stand against it. That's why I say no wicked force can stand the dance with Kundalini. Because it, if you wanted to remove world powers, if you wanted to make a cripple climb trees, if you wanted to bring something dead back to life, Kundalini. No other force can do it. I search, trust me. But the Kundalini, it's good, I'm trying to, so man, I'm trying to kill anything but those guys. I would really, I, did, I have to get them back for all the time. So I'm just <laughs> you know, there's like a snack. But um, so. So what happens then with Kundalini is that, see, Kundalini penetrates down to a cellular level. So no one can trick Kundalini, and this is the danger. This is what happens with this new enlightenment for me, right? Because if you talk, when me and Thale, we first started, like, he'll tell you, I'm, I'm wired down totally different. Like, I don't get into, if anyone, everyone's going that way, I'm going in another direction to see if something's going on, right? So what happens with the Kundalini forces is, is that what you're seeing now in the Hollywood, the as below stars, okay, as they call themselves, is they're, they're using inverted Kundalini. Because see, you got, to, if, right, it's a mirror world, shadow world, across the looking glass. But let's, let's say it in its original tense. What happens is you can either send Kundalini up, it is going into the higher octave. So the experience that you have there as you're going up will be lighter and lighter and lighter until you come into grand realization, right? Or you can send Kundalini down. And when it goes into the netherworld, because everything below the waist is the netherworld. That's why this is snake dog world down here. And it's nothing but duality, competition, bacteria, all sorts of stuff going on down here. So when you send the Kundalini down there, but the eyes are open because each of these areas have eyes on them that are closed, which is closed. So when the Kundalini gives them the power to open their eyes, then the person begins to see from here only. So they see only netherworld. So that's why their, their mind state is so dark. You see what I mean? And they appear to be smart and intelligent, almost as if they're enlightened. But they're actually working with what's called a black light. It's inverted Kundalini. It's shown as a black inverted pentagram right man upside down or a hanged man and when i'm saying man i'm not talking about the physical man because if you notice man and woman have man built in their name okay a sidebar to the original status of the planet no male and females okay all collaborating in one being parthenogenic if you saw it, it would look more like a woman because it, it's in parthenogenic state right Exactly. So that state is really the the original state. Okay. So once descending from that point is so we're several <laughs> we're several pieces down the timeline. Let me just collect my thoughts here. So just to finish off on Kundalini to realize it and for what it really is is that it's your connection with yourself, right? But this connection is so strong that plugging it in is almost like plugging in fifty thousand volts. There is a vivid force to Kundalini. Like, it's not something that you have to ask yourself, is it activated or not? Okay, once it's activated, it's, you feel it. And so the whole goal then is, if you've activated Kundalini and that's occurred, then you cannot be polarized. Because what then happens is your energy, as we talked about, and I have a chart, we'll get it in here. But now that the energy comes out of the cossacks, right, and let's say that it's, um, it activates, but it's polarized it will go to this chakra this way whatever chakra you're polarized is that chakra that chakra the chakras are not in a straight line they're actually here 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 and here i can show you the diagram the chakras are never depicted as being they just connect to that point on the spine right here well just the, the stomach area yeah that's you know that's where it starts because that actually there's a face there like there's there's many people who just work from this area alone, but that's most of where the that's the seat, right? So I'll show you here. My Kundalini, if you've noticed, because Kundalini constantly cycles. So you'll see my Kundalini is here. Okay? And this is because and you can actually see it there. Because the Kundalini has a lot to do with our sexual fluids. And that's why for a man, because a man and a woman have different systems per se, but for a man, for him to ever unlock Kundalini, he cannot do that without understanding woman's real world. 
so you don't see really activated men right it's because what happens is is that if they use their sexual force and it goes down they've just inverted their life force you're only supposed to do that in creating life other than that it goes up like my sexual force goes up the more i breathe the more it goes up and it goes around and it cycles and it goes back down the spine right so that's that's semi-active kundalini because remember when this thing turns on you just feel cones flying from your hands and feet you feel like you're like some kind of messiah or something it's very scary because you're not really used to it but in reality we would have to work our way to understanding how to be this stuff of being in the world as energy but it has a lot to do with this balance because as long as the energy is coming up and going down coming up going down for a great soul everything is great but if that energy goes to the left it's going to hit that next chakra so hard it may damage it you see what i mean because kundalini is a real force so once it comes out of the spine it can smack right into a chakra and break that one, right and it can then go from and if but if it keeps ascending it can go to the next chakra and it can go to the next chakra but remember chakras are past rituals. well not necessarily no i mean you don't want to break it right but the chakras have been damaged anyway like this is after the fact like each one of our chakras sustains a certain level of damage when we are debased in that particular shock. You see what I mean? So really the Kundalini force has the ability to heal and restore that shock. And some of these chakras are attached to our physical ailments, like diseases and different things that need to be fixed. But it's because that chakra center is no longer working. But also chakras connect to organs. So this is why you'll generally find that organ failing on that individual. But this is also another way of actually repairing that situation is by dealing with the chakra, not the organ. You see what I mean? But, you know different ways to do different things you can come at it at different angles so if you really see it you have a mental body spiritual body physical body at least we'll just start it there so you have to triangulate yourself you have to figure out mentally spiritually physically where is the greatest imbalance occurring and then start to work with that too because a lot of people believe that there's no physical correspondence to enlightenment like you don't need to work out basically but there is a constant oxygen implosion that needs to go on your blood is a fuel so it needs that oxygen in order to actually begin to pump that kundalini through and basically not just pump it through detoxify because only hot blood can remove the worms now there's another part of this which is to talk about the circle the old jugger and they talk about that the original state of this planet that there was an entry into this planet by um what was known as uh, like a like a you would see it as like a meteor right and then it was but you actually see it like a pyramid to tell you the truth but more of a diamond because you know the pyramid on top is the same on bottom right so these things when they come in they come from the sky and when they hit into the earth they go into the earth and they burrow into earth like that one that's in egypt are only replicas there's pyramids all around the world most of them are underwater what those were because that's why the pyramids correspond to five is they're actually like seed canisters arcs this is where that whole arc thing comes in the arcs two by two they're carrying the harmonics of creating worlds in different kinds of beings like that's why you get chinese man white man black man because they arrived in different arcs different ships different boats okay but still also being in divine order because there's a certain balance that has to take place on the planet anyway for it to start thriving right so what you have then though is you have these uh bacteria okay that's the best word because the word bacchus is almost synonymous and bacchus if you understand the greek mythology is more like the god of reverie he's the one that's always drunk and cussing and orgies and all that okay so the bacchus is the bacteria it's the harmful bacteria because obviously there's good bacteria but it's basically when that the body gets invaded right this is the invasion not an outvade it gets invaded by all these other life forms and organisms that are not symbiotes Symbiotes, of course, would be the ones that are assisting us in staying into this vehicle at pristine condition. Vampires would be, of course, the ones that are draining more energy or leaching more energy than they're actually returning. Okay? So when we get these kind of organisms in our body, they're synonymous with Satan, the devil, the worm, uh, uh, malevolent beings, extraterrestrials, etc. 
they even appear as such when you look at them under the microscope. All the images that we have of these monsters are just the bacteria and viruses and organisms and how they really appear. And this is also why the purveyors of this, meaning the ones that actually are enjoying doing this to humanity, create emblems and create uh, uh, archetypes and eidolons and different kind of characters to fit these motifs, then blow them up basically because they're most of the time microorganisms blow them up into human-like size and then put them on tv and then exactly metaphors but ones that are speaking very deeply because they actually resonate with the individual there's something there that corely sits with them as being true even though they don't understand why right and this is why sometimes they get these characters in their mind and then they're being terrorized by the character but really this is something that's going on inside or in the universe as we call it right so remember the the universe then is now the universe too but it's inside but in conflict because if you drink some soda man you just went to war with the liver the liver's not gonna be able to take too much more of that kind of behavior before it strikes back and then likewise other organisms and so basically a huge conflict the mind's never focused then it leads to the situation of what we witness here in the world right so in just a nutshell that whole story again just to, to focus in on what kundalini is then is kundalini is the force of activation within the body that gives it a vivid level of power to fix things and generally these kind of individuals are the rarest breed because to hold this level of power without getting stuck in a chakra is very difficult because what happens is when your kundalini raises into these crown chakras oh my goodness namaste that person is very is not very assimilable to the lower worlds in it. They cease to become bridges. See, my responsibility here is just I'm a bridge. And even my last name is Bomar, it's a bow, right? And so I just ferry a person from one state of consciousness, because I've, I've even been to jail before, to another state of consciousness, which is basically the air above. It's looking at yourself from a from from up there, from the key there, rather than always staying inside the body, but also not neglecting our responsibility here. I'm not trying to leave her. I can leave whenever I want to. Yeah, I mean, it's a garden. It's, if we were all tending it properly, it would not be any issues, but the fruit from this garden are our children. See, all the trees and everything, they produce fruit, so what is our fruit? Our fruit is our children. So when our fruit becomes spoiled, like I say, spoil the child, then there's no real, we can't live back through that particular, but there's no such thing as death. So what happens is, is that basically we end up disconnected. This is called the scythe. And that's why Saturn, you always see him, the Grim Reaper, with this scythe in his hand, right? This scythe is for reaping, but we're talking about gardening again, aren't we? So now the cord is trying to be cut by a Saturnalian, meaning a person who is in the Saturnalian state of their consciousness, attempts to cut the cord from the individual and their mother. Just like you see symbolically when a child is born, their umbilical cord is cut. But as you know, on an ethereal level, if you cut someone's arm off, the arm is actually still there. It's just on the physical reality, it's gone. So this kind of severing or schism is what we're really dealing with in the reality. There's been a veiling of who we are. The veil is, of course, evil. V V I L or e e V I L V I L. Okay. So when you want to know, well, what's being veiled then? As I say, the whole mystery is within the words and within certain cultures, because you'll go into more of the ancient systems, the ones that are still adhering to the Abrahamic tradition, which is of the Brahmin which is with his wife Saraswati, nothing to do with uh, Hebrews, but more of an ancient tradition about Brahmins, right? So what you're dealing with is when you see the woman veiled, you see them saying they're not gonna tell you the secret of the divine feminine, which, exactly. And that's what you're doing, and it's a hell of a process, because it actually involves just as much as you understand about this earth, like what you can extract from that plant over there, is about as much as you understand about your body. If you were to take the time, you'll see that if you were to take the time to actually restructure your whole body and repair it, it would almost be an all day thing for, for at least a, two, three, four, five months before you got it completely back on balance, right? But there's other things that used to help us. See, this tree in particular, it was this simple. Because it bears that color, if you can extract from it, which you could do by sitting next to it, but now it's just done through 
of chemical nature, you would repair anything that had to do with that corresponding color to that chakra. And since it's all on a wavelength and everyone has a third eye open, it would be very easy to see that, hey man, you're green is really a, is fading out. You need to go and get some of that alfalfa, right? Or you'll notice now, if you have a chance to witness the aura on an individual, it's about this thick and it's clear. This is because they've been wiped. It's not that you can't see their aura. It's just that they don't have a seven spectrum aura anymore because they've been run across high magnetic fields. So because the body is a magnet, magnets are just like what's on the credit card. If you rub it in front of a large magnetic field, then it wipes off all the information. Well, yeah, deactivation in every tense because now the information is not there to run the organism. So the organism runs just on auto, basically. Of course, of course. And in fact, your, one of the whole goals is, is to tighten down your magnetic structure to where your torus, because remember, torus is a torsion field, is tight. That way it's impenetrable, impenetrable to viruses that are not symbiotic with it. You see what I mean? So it's basically like you have a tightened down core. It's like a tightened down mental consciousness, physical consciousness, spiritual consciousness. You're not easily moved in one direction or another to play with on the tree because you already know what the tree is about. It's just, you know, a growing phase. You're really working with that pipeline, which is basically like um, your direct connection to the source. No Eve angels, no Buddhas, no gurus, no nothing. It's just you directly connected. But we're talking about a real thing. And to tell you the truth, I've had opportunities to interface. And it's one of those things where when you do it, you don't really go back to a few, four or five months. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about as far as the, right, that, that's what I'm, yeah, that's the actual diagram. And then that going right up is going right up to the solar orb. Now, remember on the path, you can also get to that orb too. So don't get it twisted that it's not, uh, and it's literally, that's the correct term, twisted. It, you can actually get there eventually. It's just, what's the, what's the shortest point from this trip? Point A to point B is a straight line, not a zigzag. So the zigzag, which is actually the movement of the serpent, is actually walking up the tree of knowledge, right? But to eat from it, ye shall surely die. Remember, in the text in the Bible, it says, ah, don't eat of that tree in the garden, because if you eat of it, you'll surely die. What are they saying? They're saying that there is a certain tree that if you actually eat from it, then you'll divide. Die comes from the root word deus, deus, Zeus, Jesus, which just means two. It's the God, and it's not just a male either. It's a it's the God of the of the physical world, also known as Rex Mundi, sometimes the Minotaur, but really more of the cow motif, and that's why they worship the cow still in India. That's why you see Moloch, he's there with the big horns, and they even offer the children and all that. But you get this same reoccurring story because the first currency of the planet was cows. If the more cows you had, the best place you were living in, if you wanted to, if you were looking for the best, exactly, all that was based on the cow. And even in fact, when they struck the first coin, it had a cow's head on it, right? Because the coin or the cow became famous, uh, synonymous with the king. Because the king is the Cohen or the priest. He's the priest king. He's the one basically that's wearing this crown. But let me explain to you what his role is. He is the negative receptacle or it, excuse me. That's why they call it Rebus. Right, but he is the play on words because he, he is he, he means female. You see what it means? So this is the whole English thing. Even son means male in our language, but you know what I mean? The sun's not a male. So this happens all the time because our language is a phallic, phallic language. It's polarized with Latin Vulgate, right? So all their whole job, the Diaboli, is more their term. They're Jesuits. They know about all this and they're, they're warped. And this is like, I have a faction that's called the Resistance. This is our direct opponent. They, it's not, I wouldn't even call it an opponent because they're nowhere on our level as far as spiritual consciousness, but they've replicated their knowledge so many times in the different belief systems. This is why within the last, hmm, like a virus that comes in and changes the core operating system, because notice how all religions receive like an upgrade about two or 3,000 years ago. Like Christianity was Gnosticism. Right? And to know Gnosticism, as you really know it, you don't need a book. Buddhism incorporated Buddha. It was not, there was no book. Okay? There, none, Islam, are you kidding me? Yeah, there was no Muhammad at all. 
it was only fire. Because they interface with fire. You fire frequency through fire and it makes its shape right in the room. Like you can send frequency right through fire and it will make the shape of what it is. And so this is who they were learning from. So their father, or as you see in the Zorshian tradition, their father was fire. Okay? And the characteristics of their father is when you is conflict. Because when you strike two objects together, you create fire. The only way to create fire is through some kind of exact. So you see that became like a level that we had to go through basically and then of course with no mother to cool things off you can cr make your whole area a desert they hit her they hit her they put the veil over and that's also why the cube is covered with a black veil if you notice they go around circumambulate the cube the cube is the kaaba right that's the thing that the muslims are circumambulating Right? So they put the cover on her because the cube is really the womb. And that's what, of course, it's synonymous with the two interlacing triangles in the center. You'll see the hexagon. You draw lines back in the hexagon and creates a cube. It's because it's an incubator. In, in, cube. Mm -hmm. Right. And then even deeper, if God said, let there be light, it must mean he wasn't. <laughs> Well, they've been tainting light. Like Venus, I've had a long relationship with Venus. And um, realistically, I started realizing a lot of stuff was Venusian because it's next door. So generally what happens is, is that most things that are sent through into Earth, they get the phi base geometry from Venus. Because Venus traces out a pentagram in the sky. You know that, right? Man, I gotta get you. I gotta get you this. Let me, let me get some pictures. It's, it's, easier with, it's easier with pictures. Well, it's good that you actually can that. So the symbol of the apple, and when you cut an apple down into sides, it makes a it's a five seeds inside. So the secret of the apple. So the big apple. And that's why also every city has a downtown. Because if you understand, if you looked at it from a topological standpoint, you'll notice downtown is always down here, right? It's in the center of the vortex. And generally, there's designs and things that they put into the city in order to, to create this. And this is what masonry does. And um, well, what you have is, is you have Okay, the Masons are like Christians in a text. They don't really understand. They understand their book just as much as a Christian understands it. So you have, you have, uh, then of course Illuminati, there's no secret society that is not a secret. Okay, so if you know about it, then it, it's not a secret. It's a fall guy or a scapegoat. Because you have Diaboli, Ordinati, and Intrepid, which are basically the other organizations that are they make the Illuminati look like child's play. And they're the ones that understand this knowledge fully. But actually they also understand, they have allegiance to the king. Okay, because so let me finish this whole thing about the king. So basically you have the sun in the sky, right? And then on planets like this, you have this recept you have a receptacle, meaning you have a place that's collecting light. And obviously, if you have a large solar bodies like Rigel, Aldebaran, Betelgeuse, these are G5 class suns, right? You have to have some kind of receptacle for this level of energy, right? And that's the king. And that's why the king is like the epitome of, of evil. Because he's created, and it's created the physical world as we know. And the money and the, the materialism, all the ma's. Okay, because if you think that Ma is our, is our term for our mother, right? 
Right, but it actually is a term for matter and mass and material, more so physicality than anything. And so you can see how that becomes synonymous with your mother, but in a tense that if you understand the whole motif, of course, the cow produces milk, the mother produces milk. It becomes our substance. So who's giving us our substance? Who's now producing what's giving us our substance? Somebody has taken our mother out of the way and then put Circe there, which is where we get our word church from. It's Mother Circe. Mother Circe is like men with wigs, men with uh, like the judges, they wear the robes, okay? Let me see I think I got Circe's picture here. But basically what Mother Circe is, is it's the idea, here it is. Okay, so this is the Mother Circe. <laughs> Okay, so basically the idea here is, is that you see the beasts, the beasts are basically the animalistic nature, they're tamed. This is the open door of the church, but the church has now become a place for uh, what they would call like uh, more like spiritual prostitution. It's a communion that takes place between, when, every time a person walks into a church, there's a communion there. There are spirits there, there are angels there, right? They're really eidolons though. Eidolons are the idea of something. They're not, it's the shell that remains. And I have an excellent video about this that I'm gonna transfer onto Thales' computer and maybe you can watch this one because it was like the coalescing of all the work from the last four months because I just took like a big break off of everything and uh, just to kind of you know clean out the spaceship. Yeah, and just get everything together for the next round of this because it's gonna, you know, it's gonna be very much more impacting even than before, not like it hasn't impacted things. But so what you're dealing with then is you're dealing with this, uh, a surrogate mother. Okay, so the king steps in place with his synthetic currency. And what he does do though is because this king is obviously connecting somehow back to the ancient Chinese empires, the dynasties, the emperors, right? It's that old samurai, that kind of thing, right? We, way before we touched down here in this particular vehicle. But how, what you're dealing with then is you're dealing with that everything that they found in nature, they just created their own. And so really when you walk into a house, obviously you see the TVs, the TV is like the eyes, the satellites are like the ears, the chairs are like legs. All you're seeing is just parts of the body all around, but not a complete body. It, exactly. It's taking pieces of something, it's like Narcissus. You're showing people images of themselves, but never letting them know, hey, this is you. You see what I mean? And so what they did is they created a system that everything that they found in nature, they just bought it into an externalized synthetic way. And then they gave it to everyone and everyone eats off of that. And then they become fake. So the same thing with the king, the king controls the currency. So all the money, that's why it says in God we trust, that God is the Germanic God whose good is the name. Good is the word we're using for God. That's why when you go in the other, or the supreme being, because when you go into other cultures, they ain't God becomes Allah, or it becomes something different in their language because it's specific to the tone and vibration of the entity in which is being evoked. Gud evokes the German God who's Hearn the hunter. So basically this God does not really like humans. This God is a hunter. It, it keeps dogs to as far as uh, what's, um, it uses the dog as its, uh, as it's, uh, how can I put this? Well, it goes, well, that's why God is dog backwards, but that's also why it came from the land of Canaan, which means canine, right? But it's canine, right? But the, these dogs became a portal, just like monkeys became portals. All these different, even the iguana, for the people who live here are their portal. If you understand what's going on, the lion was a portal for also fruits of people. What a portal is, is that when you come into physical realities, you don't sometimes start off as a human. You start off generally at the vibratory frequency in which you can hold and you make your procession from there. So all of these, these different organisms you see are basically vessels that allow the, the form to mature to a certain extent before it sheds the vessel, which is what we call dying. And then its spirit gets attracted to another light and that light is when two opposite sexes are coming together in cohabitation. It can see that light and then it rushes to it and it can do it so fast. So how reincarnation on this planet generally comes from the oceans. Most of the life forms before they choose other bodies reside in that, wa that what they're calling water, which is salt water. And if you understand, salt is one of the only elements that come out as a cube. 
then you'll understand that, okay, wait a minute, there's a connection here. So you have these souls that are in the water, in the sea, or in Mary, okay, which also is synonymous with Venus, right? Even the word amor, meaning love, is the son of Venus, okay? So she comes from Aphrodite from the foam of the waters, okay? What this is all saying is, is that these spirits, they can see very far because it's something that you learn about your senses. Your senses, you don't get six cents, seven cents, eight cents, nine cents, ten cents, right? That's going in the wrong direction. You actually get more stupid that way. Your senses collapse to where you first sight and sound collapse first, generally when you're going into the high vibration, right? So this now means you can hear see, right? And hear seeing is anything that's making a noise, you can actually see it because you can see the tube from it to you. You see what I mean? Um, yes, because heresy and hubrism, even being hubris and these words all connect to when you start to understand God knowledge. Okay. We're talking about, we're talking about, uh, we're talking about supreme being knowledge. I'm glad you didn't know that, but we're talking about supreme being knowledge because the gatekeeper, God, the guard dog, okay is there making sure he's spinning around like a fiery cherub he's really like a snake wolf by the way <laughs> right chasing his tail right creating conflict and keeping you away from the tree in the center of the garden which gives immortality now the tree in the center of the garden is synonymous with why earth's been here for billions of years it has the secret to immortality so if earth's been here for billions of years and we're trying to learn how to actually sustain ourselves not necessarily in physical bodies but sustain we could easily learn it from earth if we weren't so busy learning their twisted variation of what they say well earth doesn't need to say what it is is that earth is basically you got it's a time clock either you ascend at a certain point or you see the results you see what i mean like earth gets to this stage because it shows like another mirror to its children like you need to save me basically and so it becomes something individual you see what i mean and i'm gonna explain this very carefully because when I say Earth doesn't need to be saving, I'm not need saving. I'm not saying that we don't need to do great things to restore the balance here on Earth. I'm saying that to understand, for everyone to understand that Earth is a very, very powerful being. And if it wants to ignite or call one of these other beings that it's birthed along the timeline, because let me explain to you. A million parsecs from now, which is a long period of time, you'll be this magnificent thing. But Earth will always be able to call you if it needs you. Like if it needs you to help, Right, because it, it, it has that connection with you, right? Because it fed you, it took care of you, right? So this is what I saw when I went in the first DMT uh, trial, because I did trials of DMT, which is dimethyltryptamine, which just opens up the pineal gland whether you want to or not. And when I first went into that field, which is like a cornucopic 528 hertz, which is what the, the pineal gland meshes this field over this reality of concave triangles, and it allows you to see what you can't really see. So right now there's all sorts of stuff running around. And when the third eye opened, they can't, they sit in between the spaces of this reality. Like how you're seeing everything is more like 2D. This would be more like 3D because you can actually see this around this space. That's the only way I can actually explain it. But then you start seeing that all of these things are lined up perfectly to end up becoming the form of certain entities, right? So in that experience, when it was opening up, I wanted to maintain control. It's like, you're not going to control me. And at that point, I started seeing these, this one being in particular coming out of this field. And this was being that I'm very familiar with is being very malevolent. And I said, okay, no, 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 I don't want this. And then I heard this, this mother voice, because you could see mothers standing around you for some reason. And it said, basically, how, however bad you think you are, there's someone bad, okay? And for you to understand what all these beings think about me is to understand they're all in line with me. If I tell them to do something, they're going to do it. If I tell them to stop, they're going to stop. But the thing is, you need to wake up. Like, that's what this whole thing is about. So we'll show you anything, almost like a galactic play, for you to do that if it's, in, if it's your time. But you need to realize that all these forces are not, like I said, Earth is Kundalini. So if it wants to dash them to pieces, it can do that. And so that's why um, forces like the Illuminati, they ride this line 
because what they're really hoping is that someone actually comes with the great arcana because that's the only thing that can fix their problem what they've damaged inside of their spiritual center can't be fixed with knowledge it can't even be fixed with what you can extract from nature it only can be fixed by someone who else that else that's organic that can transfer perfect dna to them by and perfect dna is transferred through if they're next to you you see what i mean like People get transferred more perfected DNA all the time. Exactly. And so that's why they keep up so much ruckus because they're in a constant pain. And that pain can't be healed unless one comes. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Until the one comes. But the one is always synonymous with out of one come came forth many because of the knowledge that kind of means contagion. It's shocking. Well, once someone's turned it on, if they touch you, it turns it on for you, whether you're ready or not. And so there will be a time of the world that we turn it on. And at that point, we would just had needed to install the best levels of capacitors and, uh, and resistors, which is what you'll see in devices when you need to govern how much energy that you're going to get because you can't take it all. And uh, trust me, I was like really on the, I want the whole thing thing for a while and I realized the limitations of uh, And they, there's even gentlemen, a uh, certain gentleman I have on our site that he's very knowledgeable of the old guy, but he understands how um, the previous race that we were calling Atlantean fried a lot of our circuitry and DNA by keeping us turned on to Like, and when I say us, it's because we're still coming back. Like, we it existed across the timeline. It's appearing. So, if I go to your grandmother, mother, your grandmother, Eventually, I'll get back to a small village. The interesting thing is you have to understand your hyperdimensional self at that point. Because let's say, for instance, I'm black, white, Chinese, and Indian. So if I keep going back, eventually my race splits, kind of, before it comes back together again. But I'm still in all those races at one time. And that's how we create this hyperdimensional self. And uh, that's why even things like colonialism is allowed, because it actually is like colonization. It's pollinating everything. Right, and getting it all mixed in together so that way it starts seeing different variations of self. And um, and so to top this all off okay, is one of the major things that, that I've been focusing on lately is I've been working through that, like I said, the organics. Then I've discovered this whole mineral kingdom because I've instead of focusing on so much because I still have a plethora of knowledge and information and it's real time too. It's not like this stuff is going to stop. So even if I wanted to tell you everything that happened for the last 10,000 years, it should take me at least 10,000 years to explain that. So I've compressed a lot of data, but what is really applicable? Earth, the elements, because your body is earth. And first, again, you work with terrain modification. Remember, terrain modification takes at least six months. You don't want to kill anything, okay? Like you don't, you want to give it an ultimatum. As you're going through frequency, the worm has a choice. It can either choose to metamorphosize itself or it can be, get past, right? Like it can leave, right? But if you go in and kill it, you can actually damage yourself. And this is what you'll see with people who have been, they have larger worms in their body that cause disease. Then you, or cancer is actually etymologically meaning a snake. Can is means as the indigenous version of a word for snake. Sir, sir, sar, sor, sir, are all mean snake. So when they say, hey, sir, good day, sir, it means good day, snake. So remember, there's a whole serpent cult worship thing going on. It's been going on the planet for a long time, still continuing. Okay? So we have the earthworms. are earthworms are snakes. And these are the parasites? Uh, well, newsflash is the human is actually a snake. If you pull, if you pull it, Right, the dragon. Oh, I, I tend to fight. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's basically uh, the cosmic, the whole cosmic serpent thing. But again, you know, you have different kinds of snakes. To say every snake is evil is just as silly as saying every human is good. So just, you know, same thing with the bacteria. So what you have is, is you have the archetype version, which means what it kind of stands for overall which is a sheet. It just covers things. Generally, like a, what you put your sword in, 
that is that was known in the Arabic language is synonymous as the snake. And this is why you can see that any god that was ever inside of the universe wasn't in power. It's only outside the universe. Right, exactly. So how can you control something and you're already inside? Right? So we're inside of its well shed well that's metamorphosis and that's you know coming from this into a cocoon which is that 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 uh, phase in between and then metamorphosizing into this you know this uh the next level of our existence which is overshadowing you now this is another thing different different dimension because it has different different uh geometry or lower vibration because remember how the shell works is how you're living is building the shell now. And they discovered this when they took um, they took a tap hole and they put the tap hole in the water and then they put this electric field around it, like a magnetic field. And then they looked underneath electron microscope and they could see the frog around it. So this showed that the next metamorphosis for the tap hole was already there. It was just not visible by the naked eye. So the next metamorphosis of who we are to become, we're going to become different things, they're going to keep moving up or moving down, is already overshadowing us and is constantly being shaped by us. And this is why you get statues, right? Like a statue, like the Buddha statue, is the last shell that the Buddha left, okay? But he's still an idol. He's an idea of what he was like when he was here, when he was here, right? So this next metamorphosis is, which is already overshadowing us, is being wholly built by the invisible workers of the body. So these workers are shaping Modi, and then that shape, remember, makes a sound, because sound equals shape equals color, right? So this is emitting something. The brass ones emit a lot. But the thing is, is that the brass statues, they, and stone statues are very difficult to get rid of. See, that's why you find the forefathers carved in Mount Rushmore. They are immortalizing themselves in stone and this is why you'll even see certain occultists carry around certain stones that are carved and shaped because these carvings and these shapes and these curves they equal like basically uh jump gates or keys to the biorhythmic connection of that individual in the timeline and so and you have this going on it's like the whole idea of the horcrux of the here with harry potter it's just having these different things that are resonating or holding your energy and then having people get in touch with those things in order to make some type of level of contact with you, even after you've left the dimension, right? But they're not contacting you anymore. This is where the world is still leaning to learn this. This is a part of their darkness because they have a lot of idolons that they're talking to that, need, first of all, this idea of a guide needs to be changed into a beacon because a guide becomes this separate character at times and Hermes and and people start to worship these characters. But I, I don't well, well, let, let me finish explaining. But in the theory that all is self, which is not a theory, it's something that when you go into mathematics or you go into physics, you'll see it everywhere. All is self. So if you're worshiping one part of yourself, you will end up becoming polarized to that part. If you are using it as a beacon, though, which is what our stars were, they were beacons. They emit a certain vibratory frequency that when we understood how to tap into them, we would download all of that light data, right? But you need to, you definitely need to be a light worker because light information comes so compressed. Basically the file format in which it's in, once it goes into your mind, it could take you years to unpack it, depending upon your processor, right? Depending upon how your mind works and what it understands to be true and not true. So what happens is again, with the, with, instead of saying uh, guides, we should say beacons because these beacons can stand aloft and show us the, uh, the image of their state of perfection. Then if we take that, install it, and then keep going, we become more massive. But if we, but massive in a tense where your, your magnetic body becomes larger than your physical body. Right, but the magnetic body, because it's, it's what's connecting us to everything. Some people's magnetic body is like three miles long. Okay, while well, others are, it's all inside of their body now, right? So, what happens then is that with these beacons, these guides, these eidolons, is it's been taken to another level to where it's almost like the ultimate level of self-worship. 
in an external way. And this is why religions such as Christianity teach a worship of man. You see what I mean? As if we're only limited to this state of the physical vehicle, right? And then also suffering death and all these other weird things that are basically not even concepts of the kind of creation that we really are, we're more vast. But it doesn't mean that that's not a step on the ladder. You see what I mean? Because all initiates know that each of these systems, some are way stronger than others. Like the Christianity won't put you next to Sanatana Dharma. Meaning that this is like a watered down version in Christianity when Christ, when Christ is Kundalini. It's not a physical being and it's not a man at all. And if anything, it would be more of a female because the power that Christ supposedly had came from Sophia. Sophia is Shekinah, Shekinah is Holy Ghost. You're dealing with super plus beings that are gaseous. You're not even dealing with physical life forms until we know that. What we're dealing with is someone who is, the Jesuits have taken the book. Gen Genesis, okay, let me show you where this comes from. This comes from the Upanishads. Genesis starts off with, as you get into the second, third chapter, Abraham and Sarah are there. Abraham, Abraham and Saraswati are there. So these scripts, you can go to the one that's 20,000 years before this Genesis, if you want to get anywhere close to the truth. Likewise, Revelations. Revelations is the Upanishads. It teaches the seven chakras, which are become in that book, the seven seals, of, in the seven churches, right? And the seven seals must be broke, right? And as the Kundalini is coming up, it breaks off, it breaks these seals or shells that have coalesced around the wheel to bring full realization, right? So the first book and the last book are both from the Hindu tradition. But why is someone else keeping that knowledge as if it came from them? And then we have to then go into, well, how authentic could it be? Is a lot of it metaphors? If God says, I'm not the author of confusion, but two chapters later, later says, let us go down and confuse them, and then uses language as a version of confusion, and then even the statement being with man and woman working together, building this tower. What was the tower? The, the Tower of Babel, right? That's what they call it. The Tower of the Babel or temples or any of that were all bodies. All temples were modeled after bodies. That body is the only temple. So when we were building this body and through it, nothing was not able to be accomplished, right? As you get into this more perfected state, more activated state, you can do anything. Right? Especially if we're all working together. And then Germanic God Gu decides that he's going to confuse everything with language, which even allows us not to be able to communicate with each other. If this is a Chinese guy sitting here, he doesn't speak English, and I'm trying to explain to him the great arcana, and he's just like, Poof, because he can't speak my language. So it divides us. So this is the God of Division. And But this was all known. The God of Division had a use. You see what I mean? Now it's like one of, it's like mitosis in a sense. It's another path to replication. It's actually a, a way of accomplishing immortality on a physical plane is to replicate. You bring your child in, your child's tuned in, turned on. It's carrying your bi rhythm. You leave here, you talk right to the child. But if the child has been skyped or cut off or doesn't have a spiritual connection, you could talk to it all you want. It's not going to hear you just like it may do in the world when you're trying to encourage a child, do this and like, mommy, I'm not listening to you anymore, right? And this is because of the lack of spiritual connection between the mother and the child, which also redundifies with the lack of spiritual connection between the mother and earth, right? Well, Sophia is an entirely different entity because Sophia is basically a no the Gnostic Barbello. What it is is that it's an entity that was, how could you even, you can't even really sum up these kind of life forms because Sophia is the reason why Earth is really here. Because if you notice how the planet is created on this, this unbalanced somewhat, it's like wobble kind of, di different poles basically, right? How this occurred is, is that the, the, one of the beings that were responsible for plunging into their own Maya, this means is that you build a world and instead of just watching it, you decide to become a member of it, right? In that action of becoming a member, when you're pure energy, you go through spectrums. And as you're going through spectrum, other life forms are created. So every, our every move, our every action, our every idea creates something. It sends a ripple effect. But if you're talking about a magnificent being doing this, now the life forms that are being created are thinking, living, breathing, acting entities also. And so you'll find this in Gnosticism. It explains when there had to become this huge tug of war with the world where you have some on the one side and some on another and then everyone just trying to 
maintain that middle pillar. And it's because certain entities were created outside of what they call the Pleroma. This is like outside of Earth, right? So if you can imagine Earth is warm, that's why there's worms here, the same word. And actually the human was synonymous with the worm because they tread upon the ground, they don't fly, okay? So what happened is, is that this being though is very loved. That's what creates the warmth, okay? And so all of this nurturement, nature, right? And maturity, right? Which is nature with the M on it, right? So all of that doesn't exist for Archons. See, Archons are the forces that the Jesuits are tapping into. Like when you say, oh, what is this other force that's out here? The ones that corrupt the knowledge and all that. They're tapping into a force that wasn't born. It didn't have a mother. So you, saw, you see the whole idea of the Immaculate Conception is one thing. But if you can understand the unbegotten, which is the basically the last state of human knowledge is to comprehend the unbegotten, where something's not born, how does that exist? We know everything is that it has to all come from somewhere. Now, there's beings that come from nothing. And it blows our mind to even think about that. But in that whole procedure, there are certain life forms that became known as archons. And that's why you have this, um, this pact that was created. There was a binding or an oath on the Mount Hermon. Hermon is where we get our word harmony from. This means that there was an agreement made between certain beings that they would do the deed. The deed obviously is more sexually related. It's the number six, okay? And this is why when you get the two interlacing triangles, if you count the points, it creates six. Six is sex, three plus three is six. Six, S-E-X, S-I-X. I mean, they're giving it to you right there. So the actual copulation process, which is uh, what I would say is as a God or a supreme being, copulation and reproduction is one of those things that you don't really have as much control over as you would like this would be like a human being when birthing a child does not necessarily have as much control of that child as they would like as they say you it's like a bow and an arrow you can do your best to shoot it straight but once you let it go it's going to go in its direction so the best thing you do is shoot it straight so what you deal with then is that you deal with a group of beings who don't like that they don't like different this is why you see in the queens, the queen in England, she's the real Venusian reptilian queen going all the way back to Orion. They do tea at 12. They have antiques around. They're still wearing the same coats that were wore from four or 500 years ago from their ancestors. Nope, they don't like it. They can, but they don't wanna be in a field that they don't have control. So you see how the whole loss of control thing comes in again, which is, uh, definitely uh, the greatest coalescing of fear in itself, but it also keeps you from making your spiritual progress. That's why we were talking about the Kundalini thing being a completely uncharted realm that most people don't want to go into because it creates a lot of non-control. So what happens is, is that they stay in the mold. They understand fire. They understand the pentagram. They understand a lot about nature and synthesis. There's two things that you have to understand. Synthesis. This is when you can take uh, things and create things with it basically, from the elements, the basic compounds. Then extraction, which is when you can actually pull out the essence of something from it, okay? You know, which seems a little strange in itself, right? But has a lot to do with cologne and perfume oils and, and medicines and all that, right? So we have that force, right? Which doesn't like to be out of its element, okay? And has figured out the system that becomes almost like a, a map in itself over the immediate universe, which is the pentagram, okay? So they can mesh that over everything and they can see exactly how it works and what they need to do and all of that, right? But then there exists universes without phi-based geometry, right? And the entities that look there don't meld to phi-based geometry. Even some of the planets that are around us because of their orbit don't meld to phi-based geometry, meaning so if you go on that planet, you're not gonna see life forms that look anything like us. Right? But what we'll find is, is that some of these insects and things are actually what would be existing on those planets, but in our status. You see what I mean? So, going on. What you have then is you have the ones that don't like change and then the ones who love change. Now, for us, we fuel off our change. We fuel off of our ideas. We fuel off of this, this idea even that the world can even be better, right? But for that to happen, we know that it has to change. And so, that's our whole arena. We're the only ones that get a kick out of that. The controllers, they don't. <laughs> they don't. And so this is why, of course, they've created the Facebook. They created, see, that's the other thing is, 
this creates synthetics too. Like if you don't like changing, right, then you have to synthetically remain alive after a while because you're missing your next step, right? You're agreeing to not go into your metamorphosis, right? So how are you going to stay here? So you get the idea of the vampire then. Because the vampire is the only one trying to keep the physical body forever. Forever, ever? You really want to stay in the limitation of the five base vehicle? Not even just jumping in and out of one? Let me show you the, the real state of planets like these. This planet, if as certain decisions are made, which were already made on other planets, everyone's a throughput. There's no one's holding energy. The energy is passing through us all. There's no close. C-L-O-T-H-E-S, close, right? There's none of that. Right? So this is also in the beginning, you see synonymous with this whole uh, thing where they have to, Adam and Eve have to put clothes on. Then God says, oh, what, what are you putting clothes on? Who told you about that? Right? And so what this is a metaphor saying is that because when I send the energy out somewhere with, to a person, they may hold that energy, right? And not distribute it to the one adjacent to them. Then that creates a bottlenecking of the energy. So this is the same thing with knowledge. If someone finds out something great, they're excited for a moment, and then when it comes time for them to think about if they're going to reveal it to everyone, they start thinking of if they can make money off of it. They start to think if someone's going to steal it from them. And they start to think about all this stuff that basically means no one knows about it. So this is, or not too many people, maybe if you can afford it, you get to know, right? So this is what creates this stagnancy within our species because we're actually not really sharing. We're only giving our waste to other individuals. And, well, if, if some of us still know the truth, but what I'm saying is we've gotten so much into this habit of only giving what we don't want anymore, not so much as what is most valuable to us. You see what I mean? And so it's a whole different thing. And actually, it's the reversal of the equation. The reason why I'm where I'm at now is because I got to a point where I realized I was doing this up-down thing. I was getting really wealthy, and then I was losing it all. And then I had this deja vu. I was looking into the corner of the wall, and this deja vu lasted about five minutes. And then that's when I got the whole, yes, Evan, you know, you need, to, you got too much weight, so you're going to wait. You're trying to get light, so you need to get light, et cetera, blah, blah. And they say, oh, yeah, it's in the words. The words are backwards. Backwards. B-A-C-K-W-A-R-D-S. W-O-R-D-S. Your world, W-O-R-L-D, is in a world. W-H-I-R-L. And if you keep playing around in this word, these words, and no, don't know how to add an L or a God, you're the God in yourself, then you will never know how to create a world because the word becomes world when you add an L. So, and then it's like, okay, but you don't even understand. This whole thing is wired down. Now, remember, at this point, I thought I was talking to God because I used a certain formula to get to that stage of consciousness. Later on, I figured out, it took me two years, that I was actually communicating with my oversoul. And the formula that I was using was none other than the simple elements that were hidden in the riddle of the Sphinx. Meaning the ineffable name of God, meaning the name that's not supposed to be pronounced, was not supposed to be pronounced because it meant man. Man meaning, of course, woman and man, as we were talking about, right? So here it is. In the beginning of the word, the word did not come back void. Meaning that the first thing is this word is real. It really exists. It does things. It does not not work. Okay? In the beginning was the word. The word was God. The word was with God. So the word is God then, right? Okay, but then God says, let us make man in our own image. So what's the word? And why does it become ineffable? Ineffable means it cannot be pronounced. You should never pronounce it. It should never be uttered. This is what the, the Hebrew tradition teaches. The real name of God is Lord. That's what they say. Even the Masons say it's the lost word. We're still trying to recover it. And what it is is that they are hiding the secret of the, the one, the tetragrammaton, which is basically a, it's, it's the cone. It's implosion. It's actually what is the four elements, earth, fire, wind, water, the sphinx. Okay? So that whole knowledge has been taken away. It was forbidden to even use this knowledge without punishment. Okay? Because it's actually one of the only things, as we talk about Kundalini, that can remove and dispose kings. You see what I mean? Because in the face of the word, I mean, in the face of the truth, nothing can really stand if it's a falsehood. And so this whole knowledge, again, that we're talking about, that we've had this whole conversation about. Yeah. This was what, it, this is the secret. The secret is us. We're universes. No matter how long it takes to figure this out. The organs they play as planetary spheres. There's more than seven. There's more than seven chakras. There's thousands of chakras, right? Each of them function as a high. But sometimes, some people have unlocked Kundalini, but in the lower one. 
that's called inversion. This creates a Madonna. This creates a, a, a Jay-Z. This creates these kind of individuals because yeah, they seem to have succeeded. And then when you understand Kundalini is connected to currency, but then you're like, oh, they're not spiritual. They're extremely physical, almost to the point where they're into the nether of their spirituality. And because of that thing that I told you about in the beginning with the elite, or so-called elite, or elite is the term, meaning very light on energy, not using your own energy. Notice they use other people's energy. They don't use their own energy. They're in the high levels of energy conservation. They don't even spend money, to tell you the truth. They don't even use the money. They don't touch certain things. They have other people touch it for them. You see what I mean? So that whole way of not wanting to give, you see what I mean? Not wanting to see what happens different. Not wanting to see her. Not wanting to see why. Right? And just the whole fear of what it may happen if they lose control. Well, actually, it's the king. But remember, the king doesn't live here. So the queen is basically the... Um, she's the... They call it S SST Orion Queen. She sits here in the throne to manage the spice. The spice, of course, is how they're capable of seeing into the future. This is the soul force that we emit, vital energy, as we talked about, something similar to Kundalini. It's what can be extracted from a human, like them being juiced. And this is why you'll see churches are set up on these ley lines, uh, amphitheaters and stadiums. If you understand the geometry that you're dealing with, you're dealing with basically vortex geometry. It, what happens when a person gets super excited in there is that all of the emission that's coming off of them is being pulled into a vortex. And that energy is then coalesced there and generally not used. Some people say, oh, are they drinking it? They're using it? Well, it's not compatible. It's not symbiotic with them. But they just want to drain it because that means that a person has less energy. You see what I mean? And this accomplishes their overall goal of lowering the frequencies. And so that way they can always seem as if they're higher because you're basically just, you debased everyone. You made everyone feel so low and so imperfect. Now your distorted level of perfection actually looks entertaining. You know? And that's all it is, entertaining. So giant juice and stations the temples are more dangerous because the the amphitheaters and things tend to be just to drain energy but the temples are sending that energy to certain beings and that's why they have bells because bell also is synonymous with the word lord lord means to be lowered to come down like the god that's been bought low and that's why you'll see that the moon is the lord it's the first step on the ladder right so this is why most people never get past christianity their carnal pleasures because both of them are connected they have to climb up and then they climb up to the moon first and then they see all of that there whether it's the white snake or the black snake because remember each planet has its poles every planet that you'll see will have a good side and a bad side if you're going to be on the tree the thing you want to be on is the positive side of the tree right exactly and then so that's how like many of us have agreed to do that like i run around the tree all the time it's not like i can't go the solar path but it's like in immortality what else are you really doing once you come to the full realization that you're just in this forever the main thing is to get more access okay and so this is why it's important to give people the information because each person comes from a different constellation and so when you actually give them the information you get a pass through their constellation like you won't be seen as an enemy when you're flying through there because remember, the whole earth is coiling and stars are all coiling through space. We're not, the sun's here and that, no, it's like this, right? And it's going somewhere. We're never gonna be in the same place. But this also is what creates misfortunes for individuals, is that when they go through constellations in which they're not welcome, because they have not done any tilling and gardening in that world. So they're seeing you more of like a hostile threat then they're seeing you as someone that actually is symbiotic. And so this happens in a, well, more like when you're in life and then certain things start happening and it's, you know, just time of the year. And you're like, oh, it's this time of the year I had this problem happening. It's because that's, you keep going through that part of the constellation and you haven't made your, your peace or actually we call it wholeness because peace is a very tricky word. How could you ever get, right. Not at all. So peace has everything to do with pi. Pi has everything to do with five. Five has everything to do with division. See, so it's 
it just rolls upon itself. And that's really what Ouroboros is. The serpent eating its tail is when the knowledge and the information connects to the point where it just all keeps turning and twisting upon itself. And you could just keep going with it. And that's why it also became, becomes a map because if you understand how to do the as above, so below, where you can connect everything, then you don't really find yourself with no answers, right? You just find yourself needing the time in which to ask yourself the proper questions, which generally occurs at around 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. You know, that's really that, that perfect um, balance point. Well, Kundalini is, is basically, it comes in degrees. Because remember, you're talking about fire here. Like in every tense of the word, this stuff like Victorious, you cut, some, you cut somebody's hair on fire. Like if the Kundalini is moving through you, oh my goodness, you'll be running around here. Like if it's coursing heavy, okay? So let's, let's just explain it for what it is. Now, the reason why masonry has degrees, but it stops at a 33rd degree. Right? Oh yeah, he's trying to get me. Oh, so glad you told me. So, yeah, I'm actually hot over here too, but uh, they love the hotness. So, so masonry has 33 degrees, right? Also in, in knowledge, education, you get your degree, right? So why are they naming all this stuff degrees? Because it's all fire. It's knowledge. Knowledge is synonymous with fire, the theory. Okay. So what happens is the more degrees of the fire that you can hold, meaning the more knowledge that you can hold before you burn up is going to be, it's going to determine how much of it you have. Okay? So those that can hold a high level of this have, uh, they can transfer Shakti to you. Like they can, they do certain things with their fingers and they can put it into you. But generally, you know, this, this is, this is student, uh, disciple all the way because you need to now take that person to the path. That's why these paths were like 20 years, not two weeks. You know what I mean? You go in and if a, if a master committed to you, he committed lifetimes to you. He would show up again when you got to a certain point through another life and another incarnation just to finish the work, right? So what you're dealing with with Kundalini is you're dealing with the degrees of, 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 of this energy that is basically total recollection of who you exactly are, everything, right? So all is self. So you can only imagine the distance between where you are now with your understanding to you under, understanding that you're everything from fully viewing it, meaning that you see through everything. That's the all-seeing eye, okay? The Kundalini is all the way now up in the crown chakra, has now opened up the cornucopic field that existed. 528 hertz is now spinning like a wheel, meshing over the entire reality, allowing you to see everything so nothing is hidden. There's nothing sneaking around, no little machine elves in the woods, none of that anymore. And then that total realization and then also installing all itself gives you a magnificent level of circulation because you see just how magnificent you really are and how connected you are. And then things actually respond to you. Like when you come close to other organisms that are organic, even synthetic carbon-based organisms, carbon and the other thing is to, to understand plastic is not fake. Like this is another misconception, plastic is real. If you put plastic next to carbon or, or silicone, excuse me, next to carbon, it attempts to try to communicate with carbon. So what happens is, is that this plastic thing that we've come into now, which has become our current, it's our currency. That's why everyone's using credit cards now and we're coming off of the trees, right? And then, exactly, but before we were on the minerals. So actually what's happening though is our currency has become weaker because now we knew it was gold before, but actually it was mammals first. We were using the cow, right? And then we keep oscillating through there until now we're at plastic, some of the most basic, simple life, right? So that's why you'll see the world also go into its degenerated state because what it's using as its current or currency becomes something more synthetic, more synthetic, right? So as we go back into our original way of transferring between each other, which was not even so much as barter, but it's abundant. It's like when you're producing basically what we just need to live, it's abundant on the planet. Actually, you don't really have to do much. Earth is like a big permaculture in itself. It keeps producing. You can see what I mean? So when we're back on to that, when we're only utilizing the things that we actually really need, not the stuff that is just replicas of ourselves and not even very good ones, then we actually can reach that state where we now become self-substantiated. And this is the beginning of the conversation. So now we're coming to, to that closing of the circle. 
Self-substantiation is basically when you don't have to pull energy from any life form. The less you have to pull from life forms, even plants, you know, uh, vegetarianism is definitely better than eating meat, but still remember it's, it's good, better, best. So what happens is moving away from these dependencies, getting into then the water, there's the minerals. Remember, don't forget the mineral kingdom because that's what's going to show you how your body can create its own protein. Like, notice how everyone's running around, I need protein. I need protein as well. Cut it out. It's just the body is no longer in a status where it can actually create its own protein because it needs the al its alchemical cabinet pool in. Meaning that the body is the one that's mixing up Cheerios and making it back into energy. Not, you know, the, these people. Exactly. Well, in every tense, look how the body knows how to take certain uh, certain substances and metamorphosize it into something that is actually symbiotic for our bodies and we can turn it into energy, right? So, what it, where is its cabinet then? Like Theo has that cabinet in there with all the stuff, right? So what you'll find in the body's cabinet is that certain elements are completely depleted, like cobalt, right? It's not even assimilable to the system if you just get this in B12, they say, right? But cobalt lasts... A, a, a minuscule amount they can't even measure the cobalt lasts for five years because the body knows that if it ever goes without cobalt completely it actually is called mental insanity okay that's where a lot of insanity comes from when the body has no more cobalt left because it hasn't been able to extract it from anything it can get it from certain things in nature but remember it's few and far between so what i'm saying is that the body's medicine cabinet then is depleted because the minerals that used to be in it like I said, remember she legit because it contains most of those minerals and i can you can give me your email address and i can send you something stuff like that my car but what happens is is that once you replace that that whole cabinet now you got galactic juice through minerals exactly you're getting the you're getting the direct mineral you see what i mean like she legit looks like a black tar it melts off the himalayas and it contains basically 85 trace minerals, right? And not we're not just talking about trace minerals here because you can go and buy those, but this is natural occurring trace minerals, right? So you put that into your body, you get higher conductivity. That's why gold and, and platinum and all that stuff became so popular now, especially because it's of its conductors, exactly. And all this stuff still being designed right after the body. So what is the conductivity of the body? It's its mineral base. So the mineral base, higher conductivity, greater levels of communication, but also pure levels of communication. Because what happens with chakras is chakras get dirty. They're like filters themselves. They're connected to the organs. So you can be using your heart chakra, but if it's filthy, you're only going to see a filthy, distorted version of it. It doesn't mean you'll be immoral. It just means you won't see the whole picture. Not clearly. And that's how all these chakra centers work. So this getting the minerals in there gets it, gets the wheel turning. The wheel turning faster creates more heat. That creation of heat burns off impurities and toxins. And then yeah, right. <laughs> that, that toxin then begins to, you know, get flushed. And actually that's called the venous blood, to tell you the truth. And that, I was just reading about it. I have some wonderful, there it's two bloods in the body. The toxic blood is called the venous blood. And the body knows how to actually remove that blood. And it's also still very important. Remember, you don't want to demonize any of this stuff, but it, this is what I think about the Illuminati. They're holding a frequency that we would not want to hold. So let them hold up the foundation. You see what I mean? And this is the, the real thing. Like we have to detach ourselves from their anchor. See, anchors are basically tethers or cords or cables that kind of bind you down also to the situation that you're trying to get rid of. So if you fill your mind with too much of this stuff and not understanding its role, then it could become your Achilles heel at times. It could become what your energy begins to be used to manifest, right? As your, well, your Kundalini can even come up, but what happens is if, you're, if your Kundalini is high, but then you send all the power into Illuminati as being the controller of the world, and the, you see what I mean? It's like you just sent energy to them. Like it's all, see, the, you, yeah, you gave them power. And the, the energy itself is like a check and balance system. It's something the universe does and it doesn't need to be told to do it. And that's why if you help someone, insist someone, don't look for anything in response, it's coming anyway. It's not something that the universe, uh, oh, I forgot to pay you. <laughs> you know, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't do that. But, it, but, but a two, a two way street with even what you do can, you know, cause you have repercussions as you speed up. Now, let me explain this. When you speed up then, 
that's why you want to make sure that you're harmonic and on balance because now you're flying faster. So if you happen to hit something, and this is what we were talking about with Kundalini, when you weight Kundalini, you want it to go straight up into them and all right around. You don't want it to zigzag because if it knocks into one of those chakras, knocks that wheel offline, then ping pongs into another chakra, you're going to find yourself off balance, right? So this is all about why the controllers stay in stone. Like they're, at, they're in stone all around the world. If you wanted the quote unquote controllers of this reality are in statues. They're not in physical, they pass physicality. They're now crystalline. Because remember, the stones are also synonymous with crystals, right? So you don't see very, you see very few crystal statues. What you'll see is granite a lot, and you'll see different kinds of uh, stones, right? But what this is, is that it's like I said, it's a holding of a particular frequency. And a lot of our monuments, like the pyramids and things, they're holding certain frequencies. And that pyramid that's in the desert, when that thing is covered with water, there'll be another one on the side of here. That's why the whole Phi base knowledge system is embedded on Earth, because all the structures that are here have been made to survive Earth's continuous cataclysms. And then when it rises from the water again, everyone will look at the pyramid, realize it's a pyramid system that we all did come and descend from a certain point. If they get more knowledgeable, they'll realize that Phi is encoded within the harmonics and frequency. And then if they finally get the grand epiphany, they'll realize that these actual temples are aligned to Orion. And, and, and then if they look at Orion, they'll see it's the hourglass, which is really, you know, that whole, and, and you, it, well, it's actually, it's that, that vortex field, right? Which is where life, continuously can come in and come out so it's just a birthing womb like you have people from Iraq and, and you have people from other constellations but you'll also have all those people here on every single planet you'll find a hyperdimensional correspondent to yourself so that's why when you wake up here you wake up on all subsequent dimensions some people believe that the oversoul is in this higher state of consciousness. The oversoul is in the same state of consciousness that we are here, save that it's in a field that is still calculated on a higher vibratory frequency, meaning that you go one dimension higher than this, you can fly. It's another spatial. It's what gives us that extra dimension. We can actually go up with our own ports. That's why in the dreams you may see yourself fly, right? But just because you're you're activated here, I mean, just because you're, if you're not activated here, you're also not activated there, even though you can fly. You see what I mean? So it's the same thing on that higher octave, as they're calling it. If it's not balanced in there, you're just, you could be the king on a throne somewhere, but still in that same state of mind that you are in five, six floors down on the different octave or wavelength. So when they wake, when they wake up, it's all happens synonymously. And that's why I say it creates a pipeline. And then once that whole wake up thing, and this is something that everyone does, and when they do it, it connects them with when I talk about where the sky is no longer dark. All the stars are not trying to shine in their own light. Like, oh, look at me. I'm, I'm brilliant. There's no way they can. It's not even like a thought. Like, it's like an orchestra. You're not even trying to get unfocused because you may mess up your, on your time to play your instrument. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why when one person is removed, One we know is Jupiter, who's the dick, who's the priest, okay? He's, you know, the red eye, missing one eye. Have you ever seen him say, you're fine, you're following a blind eye, because this guy's only got one eye. <laughs> You'll see this motif everywhere in the movies and stuff like that, because it connects back to the one who was in the orchestra, but did not, um, there was a reverence that we gave to each other. That's what would happen. It's like, it's like the namaste thing, divine being, recognize the mind. Okay. One of these beings didn't do that. And another one became offended by the wind and removed itself from the quadrant. And then at that point, everyone never saw it as the same again. It was like, even though they would meet, they were like, man, if there wasn't nothing like when they were here. And so I think that this is also the recall of time. This is why you see messiahs and you know, solar beings, and all these different entities coming into these quote unquote lower worlds and rousing their their uh, counterparts and saying, hey man, it was not, their woman is not, it's still not the same without you. We've gotten to the point of realizing that separate, exactly, or it'd never be as strong. Like you, or exactly, it won't be completion. If it's everything, it'll be everything but completion.
And that's why so matter no, even if it's scummy Illuminati down there, it's gonna have to go get her. It's gonna have to go get her. Because I see in that individual, and I just see that being further on the timeline. That's what I say, if you, if you show up on a certain part of the timeline, there's no telling what may be going on. But where you really want to take people is outside. Because remember, all of this stuff you can find has to do with time. Which is a circle. That's why we read the clock. That's how all that stuff is all circled. And it taught me what they call the tools. When you can go back through the timeline of yourself. And you can actually go through these tunnels. And it belongs, this road belongs to you because it's a road that you travel. And then you can actually change it. Such things like that's time. What they call a charm. It's a being that actually knows how to go. And that's why in the Hebrew system you see they worship Metatron. And that's the code word that Metatron is given because Metatron is really just a cube. It's a word that causes a collapsing within your chest. Right here in the chest and the solar plexus becomes uh, well first it looks like an hourglass, and then an hourglass collapses on. Collapses onto itself, creating this field. But it's really not like a star of David. It's a straight line. It's it's, con it's concave. So the exactly. So it looks more like more like that. You know the triangle. And this is very important, especially when you when you get way up.